नमस्कार सुबराव जी प्रणाम आपका वेलकम वेलकम टू अहिंसा कॉन्वर्सेशन थैंक यू फॉर इन दिस इन्विटेशन और नो सर थैंक यू फॉर मेकिंग द टाइम इट्स एन ऑनर इट्स एन एब्सोल्यूट ऑनर so as with everyone else uh, can i ask what is your earliest memory from childhood of ahimsa either as an experience or as an idea as a value what is your earliest experience i did not plan anything and uh, the seed was sown on 9th august 1942 quit india day so i was in the classroom because those days news did not spread fast <clears throat> so we did not know whatever had happened the previous day 8th august some a few youths came into our classroom shouting slogans and they told the classroom you are all sitting in the classroom last night mahatma gandhi pandit nehru sardar patel maulana azad all of them were arrested by the british government and uh, how could you enter the classroom we said oh we had not thought of it at all so we said boycott the class so i was in the street along with my students Um, along with my colleagues you can say and the shout was bharat mata ki jai quit india and i was in khadi so the police thought this was the mischief maker they took me into the lockup all that kind of so the whole day i was in the police lockup and then evening because i was 13 years of age so they would not take me into the jail so i was driven out to the police station so in the police lock up this thought came into me what is the crime for which the police have arrested me i said bharat mata ki jai i must do something so then some of my own age children boys and girls we started a meeting in the evening we had the tricolor flag with charkha those days and then sang vande mataram jana ganamana had some games and all that so during the day i used to be in the school evenings this kind of activity that is where the beginning was made at that time i did not know no much of gandhi khadi nothing khadi i did because it is curious one of my friends said about Seven eight charkas. So for the fun of it, I learned uh, spinning the charka, and then after a couple of months, I was given a piece of cloth and said, "This is out of your your thread." Oh, how excited! Then I started learning what is all this khadi and so on so forth. So the beginning was ninth August nineteen forty two. and then mm-hmm. as a as a teenager and as a slightly older person how did you come to be so deeply involved in the gandhian movement it slowly grew uh, then i went to <coughs> a gandhi gram <coughs> that was constructed by a lady saundaram ramachandran was her name she was connected to a business family tvs now they have the this is gandhi gram at dindigal right in tamil nadu no, this is tamil nadu near dindigal. dindigal right right so they had a 15 day camp and uh, one of the wonderful guide was uh, g ramachandran dr g ramachandran it was wonderful I mean, his presentation, his study, it all was very nice. In fact, I did not know much of English, but then still, uh, it was so exciting to hear him every day. And uh, it was all <clears throat> non-violence. His subject was non-violent, and especially those days, he compared Marx and Gandhi. Uh, so. 
that was the, the kind of first detailed study of nonviolence I had with Dr. G. Ramachandran. And, and then my, I, I finished my studies in 1949, now 51. Uh, well, that's another story. My father was an advocate, so I thought, let me uh, succeed him. So I did my LLB. But then even before my results came, I was drawn into Delhi. At that time, that time I was active with the young people in the institution called Seva Dal. First it was Hindustani Seva Dal, uh, which was a kind of uh, voluntary body for the Congress party. It was not Congress party actually, it was Congress organization before that. And um, Sevadal was the kind of uh, one discipline and organizational wing of the Congress because it recruited new boys and girls and then trained them for organization and discipline and um, Congress history and Congress values. Because now, unfortunately, what I see lacking in India is the Congress values. Congress party is different. But then my particular uh, attention goes to Congress values. Uh, one example I always remember when people ask me about then and now, uh, a lady was arrested by the police. And uh, straight away she has to go to the prison. She saw one man by the side. She said, please help me. And he comes, he takes away her gold bangle, gold all golden things and uh, ties it in a kerchief and gives it to him, please, my address is so and so, please give it to my husband. And that man, unknown to her, she said, you have faith in me? <laughs> you surprised? Uh, thousands of peace value. She said, why? You are, you are wearing a Gandhi camp. What, what else did I, do I know? That was the value of Congress. <laughs> uh, she could believe in a man. Uh, that was in the 1930s. Today it is all, the story is all different. Anyway, so uh, I came to Delhi in 1951 because uh, Dr. Hardikar, who was my kind of, uh, kind of guru, he said, we want you in Delhi for one year. I said, because the northernmost place I had seen was Belgaum. I never gone beyond Belgaum to the north. And Delhi was a big name at that time. So I said, oh, one year of Delhi, come on, let me see. So the Delhi glamour and what that. But then that one year continues even now. Uh, it never completed. My father also waited for two, three years and then disbanded his office and gave away the books, etc. And he said, no hope of this fellow returning. Uh, neither did he feel sorry, nor did I. No regrets. <laughs> so, because I would mean, if I had been a, a, an advocate, maybe I would have earned some money. But then, um, yeah, working with people, especially young people, there is so much to gain. So, nothing to compare with a lawyer's job. <laughs> That's what happened. Then um, I was with the Congress, but then when the Congress split, uh, because I was within the Congress, I was teaching. One of the points was all parties, even today, have groups within the party. And uh, one principle that the Seva that developed was we should not be involved into these group politics. For us, Congress and Congress ideal is the object and no groups. And when they divided in the name of groups, then I said, all my principles are gone. Then even then I told them, look, the Congress may be divided now, but um, if you agree to have only one Sevadal for both the Congress, we will serve both of you. Then I will be I'll continue. But only one person agreed to that. That was Mr. Yu and Devar, Devar Bhai used to call him. 
He was so excited. He said, oh, Subharaji, what a good suggestion you have. We'll have only one Seva Dal first, and then one women Congress, one youth Congress, then Congress Hall will be united. I will go. He went to all the leaders, but no, nobody listened to him because they did not want this kind of an arrangement. They said, no, you have your Seva Dal, we have our Seva Dal. I said, goodbye to both of you because I want to keep friendship with both Indira Gandhi, Muraji Desha, Nijalingappa. I, I said, because I have no division in my mind. So then I came into Gandhi Peace Foundation in 1970. Yes, and then you so, designed and you have been running camps for youth across India. So can you... Uh, for the benefit of today's young people who have not perhaps had the chance to meet you, uh, can you briefly describe how in these camps you define nonviolence and how do you guide the youth uh, to walk this path of nonviolence? What does, how do you define it firstly? The very basic question you have come to. <clears throat> the relevance of nonviolence in today's world. On the one hand, people are disgusted what, with violence. What happened in Kabul yesterday? A couple of bombs and then so many people die and it goes on. So right from the family level, there's violence within families, to the international level, there's violence at all levels. And how much money is being spent for organizing violence? I'm very disappointed that a few days ago I read in newspaper that a, a gun factory is uh, founded in India. And the gun was never made to kill a, a, a poisonous serpent or a lion. Gun is made only to kill human beings. Bomb is made only to kill human beings. So people are disgusted. Uh, in fact, I had uh, 37 Gandhi camps in the United States, San Francisco, near San Francisco. And every time I used to take a different entrance. Once I went through Honolulu, once I went through Chicago, once, and so on. And um, naturally, a couple of times through New York. Mm -hmm. And once I entered the news, uh, no, I, uh, I had to take plane for India. So I come to, to New York uh, airport, Kennedy airport. I go to collect my luggage in the conveyor. I had a few time, a few minutes to wait. And I look here. A huge canvas, maybe over 25 feet or so, and the Gandhi's, Gandhi sketch in the Jan of Kennedy Airport of New York of the United States of America. Gandhi here. And then huge letters they have written. What year was this? So, Baraji, what uh, year was this? Roughly? Some, uh, 1990 or something like that. Okay. I, um, Diaries are all taken away by someone. Anyway, <laughs> and then what is written there interestingly was top line about five, six feet of each letter. What made Gandhi? And second line, Gandhi question. What made Gandhi? Gandhi. The American people are asking. And by the side, there was Abraham Lincoln, equal size. And for him, it was written Failure, 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 perseverance. So we got Lincoln failing and whatever he tried, his marriage was a failure, his writings were failure, no paper would accept his failure. All these things happened, but then because of perseverance, he became one of the best American presidents. So that was written there. So this Gandhi becoming Gandhi, very interesting because he has himself written in his autobiography. He was a coward as a child. Covered is so much that he could not enter a dark room in his own home. Uh, at night, <laughs> my father is sitting, mother is sitting, and, 
and he he had to go to the next room, which was dark. Those days, no electricity, <laughs> so there's a lamp here, and he 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 asked Ramba Ben, uh, dark there, please come with me. I have to go to that room. So a boy who was afraid of going to a wrong dark room challenges the British Empire. So what made Gandhi Gandhi? Is the question. So there comes the, the relevance of non-violence, because Gandhi made eleven vows. If you go to the army, they will measure your height, your weight, and your chest, and all that. And Gandhi's measurement was: Will you speak truth? And then ahimsa, satya, asteya, brahmacharya, so on, so on, so forth. And one of the very important rules is fearlessness. Bhayavar, sarvatra bhayavardhana. Fearlessness everywhere there. And there, uh, well, the, the, the answer comes there. Because all the people who are using the bomb, they always think there is no other way. So Gandhi said there is another way. And uh, his experiment for the, the, the first time when he went to, when he came back to India from Africa was Champaran. I don't go into that story, long story, very interesting though. But then he, 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 he the arrangement was he was to stay with Dr. Rajendra Prasad. But then Rajendra Prasad was out of town, so then he chose to live with Acharya Kripalani, Dr. J. B. Kripalani, because he had known him. <clears throat> when he visited Shanti Niketan uh, in uh, Muzaffarpur, he was a professor there. <clears throat> and many people have the question, Kriplani also had this question, because Kriplani, even till his end, he could talk very harsh and <laughs> very straight. So he, uh, he was, Gandhiji was staying with him. So the professor asked him, Gandhi, he was not a professor, he was not a Mahatma till then. And Mr. Gandhi, you talk of non-violence, non-violence, and the village people who are not under it, they all follow you. But then I am a professor, how can, how can I accept your principle of non-violence? Gandhi said, what if you are a professor? Ripnani said, what if I am a professor? I teach history, 2,000 years of history to my students. In 2,000 years of world history, there is not one single example of any nation getting freedom through non-violence. So I teach that history, and you want me to accept your principle. It's all right for our people who are not educated on it. And Gandhi is simple on his language, was always simple. Simple, but then such forceful, uh, action was, my dear professor, why do you think the, last, think the last chapter in history is already written? You may have 2,000 years of history <laughs> and let us do something that is not in your history. Benin was about six uh, months younger to Mahatma Gandhi and he made a very interesting statement and that was I have great interest in reading history, but I have greater interest in making history, creating history. <laughs> so, if you have, don't have it in your history, let us create that. Yeah. Let us make a new. Then Kriplani said, "Oh, this man is only is not only for the hundred people. <laughs> he has a message for professors also. So let us write a new chapter in history." And he did write this new chapter. Yeah. And hundreds of, uh, about 111 countries became free after India became free. Yes. Somewhere it was Naira Ray, somewhere it was Nukrumah, somewhere it was uh, so many leaders. They've all written books. And the latest book is uh, Mandela's Long yes. War, March yes. Freedom. Yeah. All of them have made references to Mahatma Gandhi uh, and non violence in India without weapons. In India, a, a country can become free. So after India, more than a hundred countries have been, 54 in Africa alone. They're yeah. all slaves. So some, some country to uh, Britain, some to France, some to 
the Dutch and so on and so forth. Yeah. So they've all become free now, now. The whole world is free. So they said West non-violence is relevant. But Subharavji, so, you have been also in your own time in these last 60, 70 years, you have also been making history because you have single-handedly taken this message to youth across India. Uh, what is the challenge you have faced from those youth and how have you answered it? Because I'm sure that many of the youth whom you meet in the camps that you hold, you know, say to you that, oh, nonviolence is not possible or we are seeing so much violence around us. How do you answer that? Once I had taken a group of professors to Acharya Vinoba Bhavi. The professor had a question similar to your question. They said, um, everything is going on all right, but then one problem that we have been facing is indiscipline among the students. Uh, they don't want to listen to us, uh, they don't want to follow principles and so on and so forth. What can we do about it? And like Gandhi, we know also was simple in his language. He said, you take your students to villages, maybe once, in a, once a month or maybe more frequently. Just take them to villages, let them study the village and your question will be answered. So during my camps, in fact, I've had camps, three camps in Bangladesh, uh, four camps, three in Indonesia, and three in uh, Nepal. I'm very eager to do one in Pakistan, but then it's not in pa Pakistani young people have come into my camps. Mm -hmm. So what has been helping me in camps is, one is doing manual work, sweating. And uh, there I see there's a great potential in working together with the hands. I see uh, I, don't, I remember uh, I had a camp in Bihar, Muzaffarpur. Uh, the girl is from Tamil Nadu, doesn't know a word of Hindi. And the boy is from Uttar Pradesh, doesn't know a word of English. And both of them were working together. They, were, they had to carry uh, soil from the tank outside. So they had, they had made a kind of instrument uh, with the gunny bag and bamboos and they would fill it and take. One said is this by one said is that way. And they have their own conversation, what language they talk. But then I see uh, they come together. So the Muslim, uh, Bengali, Gujarati, uh, all these kinds of uh, barriers that we see between man and man, one of the best things to break this barrier is work together. In fact, there was an international work camp movement. I have not heard of it. During someone, you know, for instance, recently uh, an earthquake in Bihar. People come from England, from France, and from America. They all work to, uh, for relief. So, in fact, there was an earthquake in um, Uttarakhand. I had five or six camps uh, just helping meeting the people, saying a word of sympathy and then working for rebuilding their house and things like that. So that is a, uh, even now I'm uh, thinking that we must do something like that work camp movement, call it by any name, but then the efforts are going on. So work together is a very good medium for bringing uh, values. And second that helps me is all religions prayers. Uh, Mahatma Gandhi kind it. I had added a couple of, for instance, I added uh, Jewish prayer. Uh, yeah, this were there, Hindu, Muslim, Sikh, Isha, and so on. But then a couple of them, Jewish was not there in Gandhi's prayer. I said, I had Jews by there earlier. And uh, Baha'i, because Baha'i is only 2,000 years old. So a small bit, half a minute or so. But then we do silence. I call it the music of silence. 
wherever there have been a disturbance recently delhi uh, what you call that near very busy area in delhi has some problem uh, masjid and uh, temple and so on and uh, i had a camp in kingsway camp and all of us about 400 or so we went to that area and it is so nice uh, what is that area something like sadar bazar yes that's right sir sadar bazar is an area is similar area okay <laughs> so crowded so nice because there is a truck and there is a, a bullock cart and there is a khela wala bidi wala all kinds of people and so much nice and uh, we were greeted first by a church and then the muslims gave us plantains and banana and so on and um, when they went to the uh, to the spot of the evening program and said what is happening here so much noise all around but still i went there and we have our slogans jodo jodo bharat jodo the prime minister has come out with the slogan today but then we had it in uh, 1985 with yeah. ba- baba amke yes we discovered there there we coined this word in consent it was quit india and we succeeded the british to quit india and then unfortunately there was a movement called split india as punjab says we will go away assam you today parish parwa sits in china and says i will take uh, assam away from india and all this so split india then we said what is needed is net india uh, so bharat jodo bharat chodo then bharat todo now bharat jodo so quit india split india now it is net india so uh, at that uh, spot i stood up yeah and then uh, they stood uh, lifted my hand a little but people were looking at what is happened then i said because i had 400 of my own boys and girls in the crowd i said now we do a couple of minutes of music and this is going to be the music of silence come on let us all do music of silence such a wonderful change came into that khalla gulla place and this is great potential this was very recently i think what you are describing was this very recent last in yeah. 90 2020 recently when the masjid after the the violence in february yeah all yeah. ah, right this followed um, you were gone also, after that it was here but our boys and girls took out uh, peace processions in that area and the police were so impressed first they were not allowing them to go but then after a couple of days they saw their procession and uh, slogans like jati pati ke bandhan todo bharat jodo bharat jodo and sab dharmo ka ho samman mano mano ek saman this is some in fact i send these slogans to the prime minister you say bharat jodo come on look these are the slogans that we have hindu muslim sikh isai aapas mein hum sab behno aur bhai and desh ki daulat naujawan <laughs> uh, so they uh, the police were planning to do so many things uh, subsequently but then this corona came <laughs> still but, i'm hope so but ajay you have worked very closely also with spirituality you have been deeply spir- with the spiritual values of india you are very inspired by mahatma gandhi and vivekananda so yes, how do you but today we know that we see all around us the many ways in which religion has become the reason or at least the excuse for dividing people for uh, generating hatred uh, people of all religions say they feel insecure now so how how do we counter that this current atmosphere of hatred and mistrust uh how how do you see that we can overcome this 
Very good. I'm very happy you raised this question. Go to the base of the religion. What does Hinduism say? What does Islam say? Or Christianity? Or Buddhism? Or Chinese? Or whatever? Speak the truth. All religions say. Be honest. All religions say. If I don't speak truth, I am neither a Hindu, nor a Muslim, nor a Christian. Nor a Hindu. All the religions say, speak the truth. And be honest. And be kind to other people. Every religion, one. And then we go to the basics of religion. What impresses me in Hinduism? Hinduism tells me, Aham Brahmasmi. I'm not a weakling. I am the Supreme Lord. Then I go to Jainism, because Jainism came to India. The 34th, the 24th Tirthankar was born 2600 years ago. So, what is Jainism? message says there is no God sitting in the skies. Oh man only by his nature, by his speech, by his action, man becomes God. So man becomes God. Then came Buddhism in India and Lord Buddha said before he died in <clears throat> Kushinagar, he said, Appadipo Bhava, you are that eternal light. So I am that eternal light, that is Buddha. Then came Lord Christ. And what, what, what message do I take from Lord Christ? The kingdom of heaven is in you. So I carry all the gods and goddesses within me. So I am the, uh, I'm the page for all the gods and goddesses. Then came Islam. How much it, uh, misinterpreted. The message that I carry from Islam is realize yourself. You have realized Allah. Beautiful message. So Allah is here. This is Allah. Then came the ten six, Sikh Gurus. And their message is, Manatu Jyota Pechan. Recognize, where is that eternal light? It is in your own mind. So right from uh, the, the rishis of Hinduism, they were not, there was no, I mean, the, the word Hindu was not there when those rishis lived. So the rishis, to the Sikh Gurus, all of them have one common message. Man is God. Man is supreme. One message. And um, so the prayers I, I do is, in fact, Mahatma Gandhi's prayer also, a little longer Hindu presentation and all that. So I have cut, cut down that. Or equal about half a minute for each religion. So starting from Buddhism, Buddha, Saranam, Gachami, that's all for Buddhism. And like that, Buddhism, Hinduism, Islam, Christianity, Jainism, Buddhism, Sikhism, and Zoroastrianism, and then Baha'ism. Half a minute from each of them they have taken. So the silence and communal, because and this ashram, I always wonder what to do, because they have evening prayer every day, morning and evening. But then those who know the prayers, they go on reciting. And so many guests come every day. They just sit there and uh, they have nothing to do. So what I do is I say, all of you recite. Hinduism, all of you recite. Islam, Christianity, every religion, line by line, and half a minute, just half a minute. So that gives me again an atmosphere where the young people accept what I say. Otherwise, in a classroom, uh, they may not give so much attention. But after this kind of a solemn uh, prayer, uh, there is more acceptance. And um, non-violence in action I saw was, experienced was, the Chambal Valley. See, I had taken two Gandhi trains, one, because those days India was full of meter gauge also. So one on the meter gauge, one on the broad gauge. The broad gauge started from uh, the um, uh, Jammu was not, not at the commission. So Katwa, before them, so we started the broad gate from Katwa and the meter gate from Rameshwaram in the south. And we met ultimately in Madhura, Mathura, where those days both meter. So they gave me some money. They said, uh, director of the train. So I said, for Gandhi, the Gandhi's worth no money. But then there is a situation I had to accept 16,000 rupees. No, so 6,000 rupees. 
then I had volunteers working on the trench. I said, look, 6,000 rupees I have got. And uh, if you all contribute, maybe I'll think of a center for non-violent. So it became 16,000 rupees, was a big, big amount at that time. So I said, where should I have? Because Kashmir was peaceful then, Northeast was peaceful. Chambul Valley was hot in the 1960s. So then I said, this money must go to Chambul Valley. So I started and I got a home dilapidated because nobody would go there because that was the place of the decaives. Uh, I saw that house was vacant. I said, okay, that will be our ashram. And this was Gandhi's money, so we had a Gandhi ashram there. Uh, 27 September, we inaugurated the ashram. And the 30th, I had gone away. When in 38 decades attacked the ashram. And what is there for them to take? So they took away our bicycle, a broken bicycle, and our torch lighters, that's what they want. So these things they took away. Uh, so Thursday we had a decade experience. But then slowly I had a series of camps in the Trumbull Valley. People from all parts of India came. In fact, 13 people from Canada came for a camp. Very interesting to us. So uh, this was all in the Temple Valley, and um, it created an atmosphere. And uh, in 1954, for the first time, uh, at the first camp and so on, continuously camps, and people from all parts of India used to come. And uh, even now I meet people who say, we had been to the Temple Valley and so on. And um, <clears throat> the first, uh, the kind of surrender was when Acharya Vinoba Bhave was marching through that area. Uh, then one by one, the Dekaites came and 20 Dekaites surrendered. So that was a great event, uh, but was not taken seriously, especially the police people were very kind of angry because even in the tea shops, people would be talking, look, blacks and crooks of rupees, the government is spending, but this Baba came and then without any mining, any amount, 20, the strongest Dakaites, because they were all, they all belong to Man Singh's gang. And uh, then uh, a long story happened, but then one of the, the uh, there was an intelligent Dakaite, otherwise they were mostly hundred, but then this man had heard something, Madhu Singh, he went to Inabadi and said, Anubhaji, when you went there, 20 decades surrendered. Now I am a contractor there. He went there in disguise. And uh, you come now, I will make 200 decades surrendered to you. Please come. You know, I said, no, I am too old now. Uh, I have decided now. Uh, some word here in Sanskrit. Uh, so I stay at one place, Pavanar. Then when he pestered him, he said, look, Jai Prakash Nara is younger to me. Why don't you go to him and <laughs> take him for this work? So this man came to our office in Delhi, Gandhi Peace Foundation, very Jai Prakash Nara. And he, was, <laughs> and he went to Patna and went to Jai Prakash's house and said, Babaji, all this he said, I am Ram Singh and I'm a contractor in Chambul Valley. Vinoba went there and, 20, and got 20 people surrendered. Now I will get you 200 people surrendered. Please come. He said uh, he was not only was a weak, but then he was engaged with the Bangladesh uh, situation. Uh, just now, Muzibullah, Muzibur Rahman fighting uh, West Pakistan and all that. He said he, uh, uh, he just refused to go. But then, after the third day, Madhu Singh said, Babuji, I see the telephone there. You telephone the police station and tell them Madhu Singh is sitting with you. I'm not Ram Singh, I'm Madhu Singh. And uh, you will get one lakh of rupees. And Jai Prakash said, what are you talking? Then he said, I'm not a contractor. I am a chief of one of the gangs in Chambul Valley. And I have 52 uh, members in my own gang. And I rather go. Then Jai Prakash got serious. Otherwise, he thought some contractor comes and he goes. Then he said, come on, what, should, what, what, what do you want me to do? He said, please write an appeal in the name of the Dekais. 
and then during the month of April, come there for a week. So Jayaprakadi said, oh, if a Dekai chief is uh, asking me to do this, he agreed. He wrote, a, his language was very sweet. A sweet letter addressed to the Dekai. We printed 10,000 copies of the other letter and then distributed among them uh, the villages around at, in the Temple Valley. So that is how this was more organized. Nobody there was no organization. He, he did not even tell the government something is happening. After the whole thing happened, the government took notice. But here we talked to the Home Minister of India. We talked to the three chief ministers involved. And then the day was set for surrender. And it became a huge mela. Um, Jaura, uh, the place where my ashram is situated. Uh, it's only about 12,000 people. Why is it then that despite such historic achievements. Why does this feeling still persist? And today, even today, many people will say, oh, nonviolence is for cowards. So, <laughs> coward. <laughs> why, why, does the, why does this allegation persist? And you know, particularly these days, uh, when uh, there is a tendency to blame Gandhi, um, and say that Gandhi made Hindus weak because Gandhi advocated ahimsa and ahimsa is weakness. This idea is very much in circulation currently in society. And uh, I know that you, your actions are living evidence that this is not true, but still I would like to hear you uh, explain how you have faced this criticism. present the subject this way, 50,000 years ago, a tiger ate other animals. And they say there were cannibals among human beings, people eating other people. Otherwise, they used to eat animals because for the simple reason they did not know agriculture. So they ate other animals and even human beings. Darwin says, survive the fittest. If you are not fit enough, you'll be eaten. And today, there is no change in the tiger's food. Tiger eats other animals. But man who ate other men, today I see the number is growing. Hundreds and thousands of young men and women in the United States, in Germany, in France, and all these countries, they are becoming vegans. The families which never knew what is vegetarian food. Now they are becoming vegans, not even milk they won't touch. No butter, no milk, no yogurt. So that means man can change. So this is what I experienced in the Chambal Valley. In fact, when I went to the DIG, Gwalior, and asked him the record of, Ma, of, of, of Mohar Singh, the man who carried two lakhs of rupees at that time, 1960. So he, he brought some papers and said, in our record, he has murdered 116 people. Outside the record, we don't know. And such a man goes into the jail, stays there for six, seven years and comes out. And then he becomes, he, he's elected the chief of the village in Bhind district. So, and wherever I used to call, you know, he, he died a couple of months ago. I used to call him. If there was problem between two groups of people, more thing would come, come on. So he becomes the judge. So there is human being, there is a big uh, person, quality of changing. Animals cannot change. God has given a human being, this capacity to change themselves. Uh, and that is the hope for the, for the world in future. That is the, uh, the potential of non-violence again. So, uh, 654 decades surrendered. And all of them went into the prison, stayed there for some time. And then they came out. I don't say all of them became Walmikis, but then a couple of them did become so 
peaceful and so affectionate and so patient, uh, they would not lose their temper. So such things have happened. So that is the hope. But then this has been done in a small area and, and, and uh, with a, a counted number of people. And how this has to go to the whole world is the question. So that's why I do one camp, 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 camp. So my life has been devoted for camps, hoping that these young people will become the messengers of nonviolence and peace. And many of them have. Many have. But at the moment, you mentioned Afghanistan yourself. How do we, in the short term, in the immediate Afghanistan, uh -huh. and the, 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 the kind of... Afghanistan has faced violence within and from outside now for almost 40 years. Uh, I mean, we are having this conversation on the morning after a terrible bomb blast at Kabul airport. So many people ask, how can nonviolence do anything about this situation in Afghanistan? Can you respond to that? Now, <clears throat> for violence also, you need an organization. It is an army. And the Taliban also, they are not organized like an army, but then they have their code of discipline, they have the leadership, they have everything. And secondly, money, 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 money. How much money is being spent today uh, for preparation of violence? That is violent army, uh, plus weapons. It's, it's uh, unimaginable. Afghanistan or anywhere, uh, it, needs to be, it needs to be organized. Violence is organized, and violence is spending so much money, uh, there is no limit to it at all. Billions and trillions of dollars are being spent. On, even for India, I remember at the time of Chinese aggression, 1962, India's defense budget was, was uh, 300 crores. 300 crores. And today, 300,000 something, something more, crores. So how many times, even India, the so-called poor country is spent? If you think what is spent for the United Nations is for peace, uh, what comparison is there between what is spent by nations for making guns and uh, airplanes and all that with what is being spent by the United Nations. Once I had this occasion to participate in the United Nations, one small committee was formed about peace, uh, peacekeeping organization. So I said, when we have a peacekeeping army, we have one in Kashmir, we have one, so many places, Sri Lanka and so on. The peacekeepers also carry the same kind of guns that the war making people are using. I said, peacekeeping people must have peace weapons. A lady was chairman. He said, peace weapons? What is peace weapon? He said, peace weapons are number one, love, faith, prayer, service. And she said, how can there be an army without weapons? <laughs> so it was a kind of short uh, exchange and uh, finished. And then they started the uh, uh, peace army here, there, and so on and so forth. So we have to think in terms of, the world has to think in terms of alternative to the gun. And within the context of India, I see young people are the alternative to the gun. Chambal Valley, we tried that, and uh, love and faith would replace the gun. Otherwise, it will gun this side, that gun that side. So we must initiate more and more such uh, experiments, experiences, and ultimately, one day the world must accept love is the alternative to the gun. Uh, very difficult, of course, but then different things are to you. Uh, 
to be to be accepted yeah. Yeah. so to walk yeah. this path yeah. what yeah. advice would you give to young people today who want to walk What? this path yeah young people oh. who want to follow this these ideals what advice would you give to young people who want to follow these ideals but they find it difficult and they do sometimes you know feel overwhelmed by the uh violence and hatred that they see around them so what are some of the strengths that you would suggest you know you could recommend that they cultivate to make them strong for this journey number 1 do only what makes you strong do what makes you physically strong intellectually strong spiritually strong unfortunately now we are accepting all things that make myself weaker and weaker weaker say i want to be strong number 1 and secondly think uh, happiness is indivisible 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 if my neighbor is hungry then they used to call it also violence if my neighbor is hungry and i am eating over full that is violence so uh, in fact uh, personal views for my own prayers before i start eating in my mind i think may every human being get food and water may every animal get food and water may every plant get food and water and then i eat so this kind of a feeling must come in our young people when i eat i don't eat for only my selfish uh, satisfaction but then i eat for the good of myself and good of the whole society that thinking uh, will help one and thirdly uh, when the scientists had a conference to celebrate the 100th year of darwin a lot of discussion about evolution what for the evolution uh, the birds you uh, are first it was the fish and then the fish had the fin then the birds came and they had the wings and so on now human beings what is next for us we need not wings uh, we don't need wings because we, we made the european god has given a celebratory system and similarly we have boats <clears throat> no need for it. but then what next for the human being and very interestingly the scientific people in after the seminar came to one conclusion that is further development for human being is uh, fulfillment so wonderful and uh, i get a lot of uh, satisfaction when i eat ice cream but that is not fulfillment and the scientists say fulfillment comes when you do something which has helped somebody it may be even an animal or a bird or a tree if somebody feels happy because of your action then you feel fulfillment so that is what the scientists say that tomorrow's human being must take to this kind of life where they do something which is useful for the neighbor for 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 the other one Mahatma Gandhi was asked this very interesting question in the book is somewhere here. Uh, you may forget anyway. Uh, he knew Gandhi from London, so he came to India and visited Gandhi ji. And Gandhi ji was spinning at that time. This man sits there. And he wanted to impress Gandhi. Said uh, Bapu, Lord Jesus Christ said. love thy enemy as thyself loving neighbor is one thing but here he says jesus gone much further love the enemy as thyself what's your reaction this man is spinning 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 after couple of minutes he repeated gandhi <laughs> love the enemy as thyself how do you feel gandhi said i had heard you for the first time at sun but i started thinking love the enemy as thyself and then i thought Love the enemy as they sell. I have no enemy at all in my life. And this man said, "Then <laughs> where is the question of loving the enemy? First, you will have to make an enemy to love. So, no enemy at all in life. 
So that is a message for us all. Can we make ourselves uh, in such a fashion that we have no enemies at all? The British are not at all my enemy. In fact, for their good only, I was pressing to make India free. Otherwise, uh, it was it was uh, wrong on their part to hold any other country as a colony. So I love the British people, and it did happen. And ultimately, the British Parliament uh, recently erected a Gandhi statue in front of the Parliament building. So that is the kind of relation the Gandhi expected from us. And for our own happiness, that is. If I have no enemy, I'm more happy. Thank you so much. Anything, is there any further thoughts that you would like to share before we close? Uh, well, within India, I keep telling young people, you had asked me, what do you, what do you tell young people? I say, e ghanta ko. be physically fit, do exercises, one hour. And let Mother India also be healthy. So, e ghanta desh ko. Desh, where is this desh? Your neighbor boy who, does, who has no opportunity to go to the school, teach him that is desh. Or plant a tree, that is desh. Clean your area, that is desh. Do something that is not for your selfish good, but for the community. So, ek ghanta desh ko, ek ghanta deh ko. So that I am healthy, my mother India is also healthy. Thank you so much. My respects and regards. Namaskar. <laughs>